Serious. What do you think is the creepiest, most disturbing, unsolved mystery ever? Part 5. Now just relax and enjoy. Also, if you like, please subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. William Tyrell went missing from his front yard in Australia. Nothing has ever been found to suggest where he went or what happened. There's so many theories, but nothing with strong evidence. His foster mother is currently facing charges of giving false or misleading evidence to the Crime Commission. Both parents have been charged with child endangerment, not William. And just yesterday, the police stated that she is now a person of interest in William's disappearance. Something extremely fucked up happened at that house the day William disappeared. There is a theory that he fell from the upper floor balcony at his grandmother's house, and the foster parents hid his body and then reported him missing. Account 2. David Glenn Lewis went missing from Amarillo, TX, on Super Bowl. Sunday in 1993, he was an attorney and former judge. His wife and daughter were out of town for the weekend shopping. He stayed back, they got back, and the VCR was set to record the game. He had a sandwich made in the fridge, and his wedding ring was next to the sink where he left it when he washed his hands, so the figured out he was there before the game started, as they had to manually set the VCR. Over a decade later, in 2004, a John Doe was connected to him. All the way in Washington State, the circumstances of the then Doe's death, February 1st, 1993, Monday, one day after Lewis was assumed to be home last, a man was walking along Washington 24 at approx. 10.30 p. at night. He was fatally struck by a vehicle which fled the scene. He had no ID on him and was wearing what was described as army surplus clothing. A cold case detective was able to connect it to Lewis in 2004 and give closure to his family. There are so many other details. He told his wife he was in danger but wouldn't explain. Weird tickets were purchased. Money was deposited, his car was found with his ID, wallet, etc. Under the floor mats. This is the one I cannot shake from my mind. Account 3. It has to be the, the, the Burari case for me as an Indian. Around 11 members of a family hanged themselves in a circle in order to bring a family member back to life. They died, but it was creepy AF. It is even on Netflix, it's called. House of Secrets, The Burari Deaths. Account 4. A murder in Atlanta in 2020, 2021, Katie and Bowie Katie was walking Bowie, her pit bull at dusk in Piedmont Park around 6.7 p.m. The area of the park had view from cameras, but thanks to Atlanta's mayor, a lot of them don't work. Only three in the park do, and unfortunately it wasn't any of the cameras near Katie or Bowie during the attack. The bodies were found completely mutilated, disturbingly mutilated. People in the area said that they heard her screaming begging, basically being murdered, but nobody was able to see anything from their rings or windows. They only called police. Katie's eyelids were sliced off. She was gutted but going upwards. From her pelvic region all the way up to her top chest cavity, Bowie, her pit bull fought like hell, he fought so hard, and was brutally killed by the killer as well. So many stab wounds. But Bowie was able to get some of the killer's DNA during a bite. I've never seen or heard the police ask the community for help like I did this one. The thing is, there's a large homeless population in that area. Nobody ever reported or put online that they witnessed someone who was bitten or mauled by a pit bull. So where did the killer get treatment? There's theories on who it was. But Atlanta is so giant and packed with people that this case may very well never be solved. One theory is that this was the beginning of or peak of a serial killer. Another theory is that there were two attackers. A third theory is that it was a homeless person, nomad. And a final theory is someone who they might have known. The thing about Atlanta is that everyone goes to the park they were murdered in, and the area of the park was partially but not completely isolated. Her fiancé hadn't heard from Katie, so they went looking for her on their normal walking route and discovered their brutally murdered bodies. Account 5. The Spy in a Bag Case, the death of MI6 operative Gareth Williams, whose decomposing corpse was found zipped into a locked duffel bag in the bathtub on his flat, 
the key to the padlock was inside the bag under his body. There are many theories that he had been investigating Russian money, laundering and tax fraud and paid the price. However, the police concluded that no one else was present at the time of death. There were no fingerprints or DNA found on the bathtub, including his own. It's a very strange story. Account 6. The guy who somehow fell behind a massive wall-mounted freezer in a grocery store, possibly department store, and got stuck and died, and they only found his remains years later when they physically removed the freezer unit for reasons unknown. And when they found his body, everyone reported smelling something like a dead body for a few weeks after he went missing. That was terrible. Account 7. The case of the Jennifer Fairgate, which is not her real name. The body of a woman was found in the Oslo Plaza Hotel in Oslo, Norway in 1995. On the first glance, it looked like she committed suicide with a handgun, but many things point to her being not killing herself. Like the strange way the gun was held in her hand, and the fact that there was no blood on the hand, she had the gun in, even though blood was found all around the room. Account 8. I'll preface by saying it's creepiest locally. There was a number of girls in their 20 hests that went missing around the Linster area of Ireland. That's the area that includes Dublin, Meath, Kildare, Wicklow on the east of the country that visitors may know. In the 1990 s no bodies were ever found. There was one guy arrested after kidnapping a girl. After raping and beating her multiple times, when she was heard crying, screaming by two men out hunting and they rescued her, he was recognized by the men who brought her to the local Garda station, police, and they identified the kidnapper, rapist, to them. He was arrested the next day at his home and sentenced to 15 years, but served only 10 due to the fucked up Irish criminal system where most serve 2,3 of their sentence. The most disturbing part is when the girl was rescued, she said. He said he'd do to me what he did to the rest of them. Larry Murphy was convicted of the rape, kidnapping, and attempted murder of that girl and fled Ireland after his release from jail. What he did to the rest of them is the chilling part. Account 9. The murder of Adam Walsh. He was abducted from a mall, and they found his head in a river. They never found who killed him. This is why his father, John Walsh, hosted the TV show, America's Most Wanted, I Was His Age, and we, my younger sister and I, were in the Sears playing Donkey Kong on ColecoVision with a group of kids when he was abducted. It was common practice for parents to leave their kids there while they went and did their shopping. I remember announcements on the mall speakers and security coming over to be with us until our parents showed up. This one has stayed with me for 40 years. I will never forget it. Account 10. The Dyatlov Pass incident is the one that I would truly like to know concrete answers on. Account 11. Tara Calico. She went missing in 1988, and a photo of a girl resembling her, hands bound and mouth duct taped, was found a year later in a parking lot, and the girl in the photo had a scar that matches Tara. She has never been seen since, and her family believes the girl in the photo is her, and that she was sex trafficked. Scotland Yard analyzed the photo and concluded that the woman was Calico, but a second analysis by the Los Alamos National Laboratory disagreed. An FBI analysis of the photo was inconclusive. Account 12. I'm going with the murder of Sister Catherine Sesnick. A nun teacher in Baltimore disappeared for several months. Then her body was found. At the school she taught, there was heavy allegations of sexual abuse of the students by the male headmaster and other male teachers. There was a documentary series on Netflix called The Keepers. Account 13. In the 1970s in Galway, Ireland, local kids would spook each other out by peeking at the bones in a secret chamber in field. Nobody really believed they were bones, except one woman, Catherine Corliss, a local historian who, probably deducing that if the Catholic Church, who owned the land, was involved, something sketch AF was afoot. It took years, but eventually, in 2017, I think, she managed to get the site partially excavated. The bones of around 800 babies and children were been found, who had been chucking baby bodies into this chamber. Well, Catholic nuns, of course. When? The Dark Ages. Eh? No. The 1950s. 
Ish, maybe you till the 1970s. Why? Why the fuck were nuns throwing baby bodies into septic tanks? Why not? The babies were born to unmarried mothers, so you know, those dastardly teeny babies, born to women who were basically children themselves, were full of sin. So the baby bodies, 800, remember, were put there by nuns from the nearby mother and baby's home, a place where unmarried pregnant women were sent, mostly in the 1950s, to work as slaves, receive little to no medical treatment for their pregnancies and births, and, if they were lucky, have their babies snatched from them and sold to Catholic parents in America or wherever. The less lucky babies and children died or were killed and thrown into a septic tank. These were their remains, God's work, and okay, this is obviously solved, right? People went to prison, amends were made, etc. Right? Nope. No one has ever been charged. No one has taken any real responsibility, and the Catholic Church is currently fighting very hard to have a place in the board of a national maternity hospital being built in Ireland. And they'll get it. Because, you know, why shouldn't we trust them? Account 14. Roger Ellison, a high school senior, disappeared from the basement of the former Cedar Edge High School in Delta County, Colorado, on February 10th, 1981. He has been neither seen nor heard from since. Account 15. The death of Noah Donahoe. He went missing from South Belfast for six days. Then someone found his naked corpse at the bottom of a storm drain in North Belfast. Did someone else kill him, or did he do it to himself? Either way, how did he get into the storm drain without anyone seeing or stopping him? How did he even fit in the drain to begin with? Irish storm drains are really small.